Yeah, I'm excited uh, to get started for game week prep. Um, we actually did some work on uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, but uh, mainly uh, Friday and Saturday on ourselves and our opponent, UT Martin. But today we'll be focused uh, primarily on that. I um, heard about the event today they did for uh, Coach Dooley and the, the Dooley Memorial, Inter I guess it's intersection, is that correct? Uh, and it sounds like that's a great event. I certainly have a lot of appreciation for uh, coach and his family and uh, what they've meant to this community it meant a lot to, to me personally as well so I'm glad they were able to do that but for today uh, to UT Martin we move on we got a lot of respect for UT Martin coach Simpson and his staff have done a tremendous job I mean when you talk about being conference champs which they've been um, a lot of their stats within their conference look very similar to ours in terms of being balanced really good on offense and really good on defense um, and we played teams from that conference, and I know a lot of coaches in that conference. One of our coaches, Trey Scott, got his start uh, there, his first job by uh, Coach Simpson and, and worked. He knows their offensive coordinator uh, really well, and uh, they've done a tremendous job with their program of building it uh, from the ground up, and they've got a uh, great foundation laid. So we're excited to have them come in and hoping for some good weather. Um, excited for our, our guys to get to go play somebody else. They've worked tremendously hard this camp. I mean, we probably have had one of the, the toughest camps since I've been here, um, mainly because of the heat. The heat was so different the last, I guess, three weeks. It's just uh, you, you can't avoid it, you, you know, and it's been tough. And uh, our guys have pushed through it. And uh, now we've got to set a standard for how we practice in season. Um, and that starts today because you don't inherit that from previous teams. Kirby, on the running backs, uh, what's Dejon Edwards been dealing with, uh, and how is he and Kendall Milton, and have you been uh, looking at Dylan Bell at running back? Well, we're looking at everybody at running back. We're going to try to find the best way possible to get um, the ball in the hands of the playmakers. Uh, but to answer your question specifically, uh, Dejon was dealing with an MCL. He had one uh, last year, um, but he's actually doing great. I um, think he's going to be able to practice and, and do everything today. So we feel good about Dejan's status. He, uh, it, it happened in the second scrimmage. And so I don't know what that date was, but um, would have been, you know, I guess a week ago Saturday. Um, and he's, he's bounced back pretty good from that. So he looks good. Kendall has been dealing with a hamstring most of, almost all of camp. Um, he feels, you know, 80, 90%. And uh, we're hopeful to get him back uh, today as well in terms of uh, practicing and taking reps. The volume they do, we have to be careful of because they haven't been uh, in the heat as much as the other guys in the last week. But we feel good about both those guys. I feel good about Andrew Paul. Rod Robinson's had a great camp. Cash has had a good camp. Um, really got a, a bunch of guys who've repped and, and done some good things there. But Dylan, we need Dylan at wide out. We need Dylan on special teams. Um, Dylan has had a really good camp in terms of being a wide receiver. He played that some in high school, so that's something he's done before. But, you know, we, 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 the way offenses are nowadays, you can get your touches a lot of ways. Um, and we've got a lot of plays uh, that involve perimeter blocking, direct runs, perimeter runs. I mean, as a defensive coach, every offensive play has three plays on it. So it could be a direct run with this and this. And in those ways, you can get a lot of people touches. So that would be the plan. But I feel good about the backs we have. I feel a lot better if Dejon and, and Kendall are 100%. But uh, we'll see where they are today. Coach, you talked about kind of preparing for UT Martin, of course. Um, obviously, their starting quarterback they named just recently in Kincaid Dent. Uh, I think he's only got about nine passes combined over his college career. Most of his film is holding kicks. So how do you kind of prepare for a guy like that without with limited film? Well, you don't prepare for the guy. You prepare for the offense. You know, you don't like when we go play somebody, we don't prepare for the guy. Uh, we might try to find something out about him in terms of what did he do in high school? What does he excel at? Uh, what does he struggle with? Is he a guy that, that doesn't read coverage as well? Is he a runner? Is he not a runner? I mean, there's all kinds of things we'll try to discover. But, you know, they have an offense. They have an offensive system, and they'll cater that offensive system to fit his skill set. So we, we go off what they've done in the past and uh, a little bit of research on him as well. Coach, I was wondering if you could speak about UT Martin schematically and if there's any similarities to anybody you might face down the road, maybe in conference. And if so, do you use that as an opportunity to maybe, not necessarily experiment, but maybe put something on tape that you might try later down the road? 
No, I mean, we, we look at them schematically and we try to figure out who they are, what they've done. You watch all their games. Uh, you worry about yourself. You try to improve the things you do yourself. I think it's really important. First game of the year, we always look back at things that gave us problems because that's probably what they're looking at. And you want to you know, research and say, all right, what, what have they done well? What have they done poorly? What have we done well? And, and what have we done poorly? Because we're going to see some of that. Um, they are a, a well-coached, very good scheme team offensively. They're like everybody you play. You know, there's, there's nobody that's really different anymore. There's more of the same. You don't see a triple option. So it's like, okay, well, what do they do offensively? They're very similar to everybody else. They got the ability to throw the ball in the perimeter. They throw RPOs. They run the ball well. They have plays. They don't block anybody in the interior, and it doesn't matter because the ball goes on the perimeter. Uh, so they do a good job of that. Defensively, they're, they're similar to us. You know, they, they can go three down, they can go four down. They primarily go out of an odd look and uh, a three down look. And we get to look at that a lot because we do it defensively. So we, 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 we share um, ideas in terms of schem schematics. When you watch us and them and you watch their conference, you see some similarities there. Coach, uh, can you give two questions? Can you tell us a little bit about Laneith Whitehead and maybe if we can expect to see him? And what's the status on Lad, Lad McConkey? Um, Lad's doing great. We had to uh, shut him down for a little bit. He had a little bit of a, a back injury, but he's fine. He's dealt with it before. He's had it last year. He practiced uh, Saturday and uh, was good and expected to be out there today. So he should be fine. Uh, in terms of Laneith, he's dealt with a little bit of a knee injury during camp. Um, it was bothering him, but he's he's battled back from that. Uh, he's trying to learn our offensive system still and pick up on things and kind of find his fit and his where he fits uh, in this running back group. And uh, he's done a good job, uh, giving us a great look and, and continue to work and get opportunities. There's certain a lot of opportunities at the running back positions for guys to get carries and show us what they can do. Uh, Kirby, just updates on Kamari, David Daniel, and Smile. Yeah, those guys look good. Uh, been practicing. David Daniels had a little bit of a turf toe. Uh, he came back out Saturday, was able to run, hit some high speeds. He'll be practicing with us. Kamari and Smile have been practicing for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, how much does Carson stand to benefit by having a guy like Cedric, you know, be his center in front of him and having someone and playing behind someone that has so much, you know, game experience and has already seen so much? What are the benefits of that? I would say familiarity. I mean, he knows that Cedric's been there, but I, I, it's probably overrated because Carson understands fronts, coverages, pressures. He can ID protections. He can point runs. He can do a lot of different things. So he doesn't have to rely on uh, Cedric like maybe a new quarterback would because I don't really just – I don't see – Carson that way. He, he understands it. He gets it. He's had a ton of reps. So I think the, the, the fact that he's got somebody that's played uh, in big moments, someone that snapped the ball in tough environments is comforting. But as far as what Cedric provides for, for Carson, it's probably reassurance. Coach, I want to ask about the secondary room. I know you got four guys competing uh, to either start alongside Kamari or in place of him if he can't go uh, this weekend. What is how's those uh, four guys kind of looked, and has any of them stood out to maybe earn one of those starting spots? Uh, uh, are you asking about the safety in the star position, or what are you specifically? Asking? Yeah, we've got a group of cornerbacks who, I mean, Kamari's really been going now for a little over a week and practicing and taking his reps. He's been in a black jersey some, but that's more precautionary. Um, we know he can hit and tackle. He's a really physical tackler, so uh, he's been able to tackle in individual drills and things. So he's he's been he's been great. Uh, the other guys have all competed there. They've had a really good uh, competition between Nyland, AJ, uh, Humphrey, Julian, and Dalen. They've all four taken reps and gotten work there. And, you know, I, I don't know that we're ready to say anybody's stood out beyond somebody else. And, um, you know, we'll have practices this week that are game speed, game like. We make a determination this week or determination in the game. But staying healthy and, and all those guys have done a good job. Yeah, asking about the safeties and stars. I mean, what, what do you like about how the defense is playing with, with Javon at safety and maybe Tyke at star and how Will, will that change the defense, having those guys playing more of a role without Chris here? There's not a lot of difference. I mean, we're running the defense we run. Uh, those guys are competing. We're trying to build depth. 
we're trying to get experience for uh, Javon. It's, it's, a, it's a different transition when you go backwards than when you go forwards in a defense. He's going backwards, but he's going somewhere, somewhere he's played before. Uh, so that transition has been great. How are we playing right now? I, I can't tell you that because you know, we haven't played anybody. So we got to go play to kind of find out where we are and see where we need growth at. But number one, staying healthy at those two positions and building depth for, for if we're not are the key. Coaches, if you've come to the decision yet on the, the kicker duties, field goal, extra points, kickoffs, that sort of thing. Yeah, I hadn't completely come to conclusion uh, of what we're going to do there. Obviously, the punting duties are sealed up, but the the, the kickoff and uh, uh, field goal kicking duties will be decided probably shortly. Coach, with the way the schedule presents itself, having these first two weeks before conference play starts, how many of these position battles might extend on into maybe the South Carolina week? and give you an opportunity to really, truly evaluate game reps? Well, I, unfortunately here, it's never decided. I mean, it's just, it changes the week of. I mean, outside of a few positions, I, I don't care who you are. If you don't go out there and practice good, you're not going to play. So position battles here will go on throughout the year. Uh, I think what you're kind of directing it towards is, you know, you're playing a, 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 a what would be considered uh, somebody would say it was a lesser opponent. I certainly don't look at it that way. We don't look at it that way, or we don't look at it as, as a luxury to be able to do this or that. We want to go out and get great rhythm and start fast and dominate and play well. We want to play our best each and every game and grow from that. But as far as the opportunities for guys to start and play, they get that opportunity every day. We're going to go out there today and, and do best on best and see who plays. And the guy that plays better is going to be the guys that get to play, regardless of whether they start the first or second game. Kirby, uh, what's uh, at tight end? What's the latest on Lawson's uh, prognosis, and wh what have you seen the last couple of weeks as far as depth at that position? Yeah, Lawson ended up getting the uh, the tightrope surgery, um, and uh, you know we don't know when to expect him back. He's already out of a boot and walking with pressure on it, which is great news. Um, and he's out at walkthroughs at meetings. He's very attentive. Um, he's going to help us special teams wise. But in the time that he's been gone, um, Oscar Pierce have both picked up. The load done a great job. Uh, we've had some other guys audition and, and, and move around at that position. But I mean, it's a position that if you have the luxury of depth at receiver, you don't have to play as much 12. Um, if you've got 12 personnel, you better have two viable backups that can play there. And we certainly have worked towards that. Um, we'll continue to see uh, where it goes. But uh, Pierce has done a nice job in uh, with Lawson's uh, injury. He's gotten more opportunities. Coach, obviously it's year eight, you're older, your kids are older. Uh, the demands of the job have not slowed down. It, it, in fact, they've probably cranked up a little bit. Uh, can you give us an idea how you're managing all that and, and maybe an update kind of on your family and kids? I mean, they're teenagers now, getting to be teenagers. Uh, and how you – do you feel like you're doing a pretty decent job of balancing that? Yeah, that, that part has actually become easier. The, the demands of the job have increased, but – so has the retention of my staff, which has allowed me to um, afford people the opportunities to lead the team, lead their unit, um, delegate more duties, which in turn allows me to be a better husband and father, which is probably the primary goal of what I want to do as a man. And I certainly have had more time in the last two to three years with my family than I have previous. Uh, and that has a lot to do with maturing as a coach and having a staff that allows you to do that, a support staff um, with few, you know former head coaches on our staff between Will, Bobo, Monken being here at the time. You got guys, Dell that's been here forever. Schumann, they understand what you want and what you demand and allowing those guys opportunities to uh, lead the team, lead certain uh, areas of the team. Uh, it affords me the opportunity to be a better husband and father. Kirby, we've seen you in um, a, a leadership position uh, in college football, being on this rules committee, um, obviously comes with the turf, being a veteran coach. Uh, the Big Ten's moving to this availability report every week, and I know LSU's doing that. You're, you're pretty transparent with us as well. Do you, are you, would you be in favor of a SEC weekly availability report, and do you think that that will help in the effort, efforts to maybe curb some of the gambling issues? 
I'm for whatever helps cur curb the gambling issues because I think it's a major issue in all of sports um, with the states now taking on more and more gambling, the, the tax revenues that states are able to get, the pressure that they put on uh, student athletes sometimes trying to get information, which I have no proof that happens, but it certainly uh, scares you as a coach. You worry about pitfalls and you worry about where your kids can make mistakes. That's an area that's really hard to police for us as coaches because outside of this building, what they come in contact with, what information they may or may not share uh, is scary. But as far as the uniform uh, injury policy, I would have no issue with that. I, I always defer to Sankey and the leadership of our conference because he does such a good job of seeing it from 10,000 feet and not from the view of just one coach. Um, I don't Again, I don't have a whole lot to hide. If you want to ask me about it, I'll tell you. I can never say sometimes whether they're going to play in the game or not because I don't know. I don't know till right up till the game sometimes because we're trying to make every player available we can, and we don't know the most accurate information. If there was a standard reporting procedure that was more uniform, it'd probably make it better, but you're not going to make the people go away that still want to go dig and find and ask questions and try to gather a, a competitive advantage. Hey, Kirby. Um, I know you like to stay in the moment and, you know, the day and not looking too far down the road. But is That's anyone, correct. <laughs> yeah, I think I've got that right. Um, but you're going to ask there, anyway. Is there, any, is there any way you use the, 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 the prospect of having a chance to win three straight national titles not done in the poll era? Can you use that without getting out of the moment but at least give the guys that kind of carrot to shoot for? And maybe is there an, uh, some sort of motivational – way you can use the chance to do something that's never been done? Absolutely not. I just don't think you can make it about that. Because the minute you do that, you open yourself to distractions, added pressure. What if it doesn't happen? What are you playing for? I mean, there's just so many things that I just don't believe philosophically in doing that. Because what the previous two teams did has no bearing on this team, has no bearing. Um, our focus is UT Martin and really us. And that's going to be true whoever we play is we have to remain focused on us and we have to, like I said, set a standard of the way this team's going to practice in a game week. And that's kind of like being where your feet are because you don't inherit practice habits. You don't inherit standards. You set them and they change year to year and, and you got to kind of acknowledge them. So. That's where our focus is. I know it's so hard for people to believe that we're not talking about the other, but we got a lot of uh, work to be done before we start talking about that. Kirby, I've heard you talk about reinventing yourself to be better than you were last year. Um, how, how is your program doing that this year? Well, I think you know you do it based on who you have. Um, I think offensively, defensively, special teams, we're looking at things to change that are going to make us better. We're looking at different ways we walk through. We're looking at a different practice format today than it was last year on this Monday. Um, we're looking at what this team needs relative to where we are. This is not the same team we had two years ago or last year. So what do they need? You know, and that's that's how you reinvent yourself to be better. And we're looking at that every day. Just in the off season and. You know, specifically through fall camp, where have you seen this offensive line grow and you know, what are maybe a weakness that you've seen out of them? Well, the not weakness, the fear is 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 reading what you all say about them, you know, or believing that what Warren Brinson says about Amaris Mims is 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 going to be the, the gospel. I mean, you have to earn that. You have to, like, you have to go out and earn what you get and do it on tape. You just get told that you're this or that doesn't make you that. And uh, you can, I can show you countless examples on tape where that hasn't been true. I can also show you countless examples where it has been. Um, and you're only as good as your last practice. And that's what this offensive line will worry about. I mean, depth is a concern. Um, how many guys can we play? And how, how, how do we avoid injury and stay healthy? And, and some of that comes with luck. Let's take two more questions. So we'll use your words, not ours. What excites you about this team? excites me about this team is the maturity level, the approach they've taken to their work. So we had an off-season workout program. We had a spring practice, which I was very pleased with. We had summer workouts, which I was very pleased with. We had camp that uh, it wasn't our very best camp, but we also had a lot tougher circumstances than we've ever had in camp. Uh, I can say that the, we've had better practices, but we've never had 110-degree heat either. So I'm 
very excited about like every day you go to work with this group they're fun to be around because they actually listen to what you say and they try to do it like you say it and that that that's important i mean who you are intangibly is really important and they they've done a great job uh with that now still got to transition to the field and the games kirby did you watch any games this weekend to see how the new clock rules working out with the, the uh, clock stopping on not stopping on first downs and you just give us your overall take on that yeah there's a lot of talk a lot of text going around but i didn't we we worked on saturday so i didn't get to really see any games we practiced and worked but uh, we talked to some analytics people that had it from 65 to 69 offensive snaps or 69 to 65 meaning it was you know three four lower but um, you know, people factor Navy game in against Notre Dame. Navy is very different. Uh, we'll see more as the year goes on. We all thought that it would be less. We thought it would be three to five less on average first weekend. I think it was right around that. That's not including some special teams plays um, that might have gone down in there as well. But I don't think we'll know until we get into conference play.